XMCloud is a SaaS experience management tool that provides you content headlessly through Edge. So that means you build your front-end application against the Edge endpoint that provides you content as well as layout information. We've seen in an earlier video that you can run XM Cloud CM locally for development purposes, but you would require a Windows container for it. Now, as a front-end developer, you might run on a Mac and you only want to care about your front-end application. And hey, it's a SaaS product, so why shall you set up a whole local environment? The good news is, you don't have to. You can run your local node server for your front-end application and connect to your XM Cloud Edge endpoint. Let's go through the steps one by one. First, we need to configure the app to connect the Edge endpoint. Therefore, we need to provide the environment variables same as we provided them connecting the cell. So, go to the source folder, then the rendering, in our case that's SXA starter, and by default you have an end file that was provided for you. It's not recommended to modify this one. Instead, create a new env.local. Let's copy over the content of the end file. If you look at the documentation in the file, you can see that by default the env.local is ignored by Git. So this way you don't submit local changes by accident to the source control. If your env.local is not shown with the correct syntax highlighting, you can press Ctrl Shift P and search for change language mode. In there you find configure file associated for dot local. Click this one and choose environment variables. Once the file looks good, we need to add a few environment variables. First, we set the API key with the edge token. We created the edge token earlier and used it for the Vercel deployment. So you go to Vercel and find it there. If you've not set up Vercel, you can run the new edge token PS1 script located in the root of your solution. Next, we provide the GraphQL endpoint, which is also the same one used during the Vercel setup. Last but not least, we need to provide the JSS app name, which is the name of the site. In my case, I also enable the debugging to see more details in the log output. Now, I open the terminal and I navigate to my rendering folder. In there, I need to run the npm install command. This might take a while. Luckily, npm install only needs to be run once. So, as the installation is finished, we can start the node server. I recommend doing this in a separate terminal window as it will be blocked by the running app and provides us with log information. In here, I also navigate to the rendering folder and run npm run start connected. By the way, when running the node server for the first time, it takes a bit longer. Next time, it will be up in about two or three seconds. Once my node server is up, I can call the app in my browser on localhost port 3000. To verify I'm connected against Edge and no longer against my local, I want to change content and publish it. So I will change the headline of the promo on the right. I'll move to my content management and open the home page in Experience Editor. Here I change the headline to Latest Composable Products. Save it and publish the page. This will publish the content to the pre-configured Sidecore Edge. Remember, I'm in my remote XMCloud instance that I set up in the first video of this series. Now that the publishing is done, let's check the result on my local rendering host running on the node server. After reloading the page, we can see the changes. Let's do a last test. I want to make a change in one of the components, so I go to the promo component and change the default variant that's used on my homepage. I'll add a little text stating that this is a promo. Save my changes and when I check the changes on the rendering host, I see that the changes have been made instantly. So 
Seems as we are all set as front-end developers to start crafting our application. And keep in mind, everything shown here will work on a Mac as well, 